Number one. Trying to have a girl. 
they should call me a big nerd.
research needed. Well, that's one of the things I like about writing stories is because I like going to school. I like learning stuff all the time. So I am constantly doing research. I do a lot of mine online now. Like if I needed pictures of libraries and I, I needed to find out like fun facts and things like that. And so it's, I guess that's usually that's why when I showed you my office, I have two computers going on. On one screen is what I'm writing, and on the screen where you are now is usually whatever thing I'm researching and investigating is. Like I just worked on a book uh, for Escape from Mr. Le um, for the Limoncello Library Olympics. All the kids are going to be staying in an Olympic village that's going to be a, a, a motel. So I did all sorts of research on extended stay motels and what they look like and what's around there. So I, I'm constantly doing research. It's like the most fun of my job, and I find out a lot of interesting stuff. Me because see I love the actual writing part. I love coming in here every day and seeing what's going to happen next in my stories. I guess the hardest part is when you turn it over to the world and it goes out there and you have to sort of develop a pretty thick skin because even though like 99.99% of the people are going to love what I do, there's always some people who hate it and they just say he's terrible and they always seem to be the people who write on good reads and they like to write Amazon reviews. So it's like you have to avoid the reviews. You can't read the good ones unless you want to read the bad ones, too. And I don't get many bad ones, but all writers are very insecure. We all think we're no good. So when you write a mean review, we just grow. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. What is your favorite character from the book? Slow down, but stand up and say it again. Really? I understood him. He's like okay. talking like a New Yorker. I'm okay. <laughs> Library. I guess my absolute favorite is Mr. Lemoncello himself because he's kind of zany and wacky and improvisational and I have a lot of fun when I'm writing his stuff because I just got finished re you know, writing some new stuff for him and it's just a blast writing for him. I love that. I also like Kyle because he's a good kid and he's really competitive but he's also like a team player and I like his friend Akimi because she's like a smart aleck, like a wise guy because I figured he needed a good best friend to kind of look out for him and and she like cuts through stuff. She's very funny, I think. And I like Miguel's enthusiasm. I even like my bad guys. See, it's funny when you're an author, everybody's like a little bit of you. Like uh, Andrew Peckelman, the whiner, the guy with the big glasses. is like, this is stupid. This library is stupid. This whole thing is stupid. I don't want to play. That's me on a bad day before I've had any coffee. <laughs> so it's like all their characters are based on me. So I guess they're all my favorite characters. Probably Charles Chillington is my least favorite, but you always need a uh, protagonist, which is Kyle Keeley, my main character. Then you need someone to cause him trouble the whole time, and that's what Charles does. He, he's the almost the exact opposite of Kyle. He's out for himself. He doesn't even need a library. The first time we meet Charles Chillington, he's in his home in his little McMansion, and he's got his own private library at home, so he doesn't even need to go to a library. So I tried to make those two the uh, polar opposites of each other. Would you let someone turn your book into a movie? Yes, I would, because I signed a piece of paper saying I would. In fact, uh, Nickelodeon is uh, trying to turn it into a movie right now. Oh, yes. and, uh, they signed what they call an option, which means I agree not to tell the story to anybody else. And then they have like a year to write a script and get a director and find some movie stars to be in it. And then they go back and they see if they get the money. And if they get the money, then we'll be in production. So I'm told it's going well, that they're in the second draft of the screenplay, and that they might start production in the new year. Scott, have any of your other novels turned into movies yet? There's this no, movie. they've come close. You know, that's why when you get your movie, when your book gets option, it's your mother gets really excited. Woohoo, it's going to be a movie! <laughs> I put The Crossroads was optioned to become a movie and nothing happened. And uh, my adult mysteries that I write for adults have been optioned three different times and nothing ever happened. So you get a check for like $100 and you go buy yourself a Frappuccino. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, number 11. Do you know that Andrew Lincoln
No, it's a good question because, you know, typically, I guess I let every scene unfold. But when I'm writing mysteries like this one, I knew how the kids were going to get out because that's what you need to know to go into it. So that way you're not, like, wasting a lot of time. So I knew that they were going to all tunnel their way out. So I started dropping clues early on, like the bank, you know, with the bank vault door. So you, that way you know what kind of clues to put on, put in. And the hardest part about writing a story like this is making sure the clues are good, but not too easy. Like, you know, when they go down into the uh, Dewey Decimal Room about zoology, and they discover Mr. Audubon in there painting the bird who sings like, uh, who can imitate the police siren, that originally he went down there and they discovered a prairie dog town with all these prairie dogs digging tunnels and stuff. And we said, you know what? Anyone who reads this chapter is going to know that a tunnel is the way out. So we had to rewrite that whole chapter, got rid of the prairie dog town. So yes, I usually know when I'm writing mysteries, I know the ending first. Uh, number five. What book are you going to write now? I think is what the title is going to end up being, all about a fifth grader whose mother makes robots and makes him take one to school, and he's not too happy about having to sort of babysit this kind of goofy robot. And then we've got James Patterson, we've got Treasure Hunters 3, and I'm Totally Funniest, and there's two other projects that are top secret that I'm working on because he hasn't announced them yet. And then my own books, uh, The Island of Dr. Libris is going to come out next March, and it's all about a boy whose parents are going through a little rough period in their marriage, and they decide to spend the summer apart. So Billy, my hero, is going to spend the summer in this cabin on a lake with his mom, who's working on this dissertation, so she's going to be busy all summer. Dad's going to be in New York City. And this cabin is owned by a guy named Dr. Liebers, who works at the same college where Billy's mother works. And it might be the testing ground for some kind of weird experiment because all around there's all these like bank security cameras, there's a satellite dish in the backyard, but inside the cabin there's no television, there's no DVD, there's no Xbox, there's no PlayStation 3. On his first day at the cabin, Billy drops his iPhone and it shatters. He's totally cut off from the electronic world and his mom says, look, Billy, I know you're upset, but what do you think kids did the days before all these electronic gadgets? And he says, I don't know, cried a lot. And she says, have you read any of the books in Dr. Lieber's study? Because in his study, there's this ornately carved wooden bookcase that Billy can find the keys, he can open it up. There's all these classic books in there. So he finally takes him a while to find the key, but he finds it and he takes out a book about Hercules. And he starts reading about Hercules. You know, these are pretty cool. I can kind of see it in my head. And he can hear this this giant Hercules picks up this other giant named Antaeus and throws him to the ground. And the earth shakes. And the floor in the room where he's sitting shakes. And then he hears a voice off in the distance saying, put me down, you puny mortal. And he goes running outside. And he looks at the island. And he sees this big giant, a shadow of a giant walking across. And so what he comes to discover is that whatever book he reads in that study, the characters come to life out on the island. So that'll be out in March. And then a year later, Mr. Lemoncello's Library Olympics will be coming out because I wrote a second book because I figured that if I was a kid in Georgia, say, and I was watching TV and all these kids were starring in these TV commercials and I found out, well, they won some game in a library, I might say, well, why didn't I get invited to play? I'm just as good in a library as those kids. So Mr. Limoncello agrees, and he has competitions all over the country, and teams from like seven different regions come to Ohio for the first ever indoor library Olympics. And whoever wins the most medals of 12 games will be crowned the true champions of the library. And Kyle and his teammates come back to defend their crown. Uh, Is there an inspirational place where you write? Is there an inspirational place where I write? Well, this place right here is where I write most of the time. But you know, I can write to music. Some people can't do that. 
but I can put on my headphones, and the first thing I do usually when I start a new book is I go to my iTunes and I make a playlist, especially for that book. So for like the island of Dr. Libras, there's like a lot of like science fiction, scary movie stuff. And so since I can put on headphones, I can write almost anywhere. So tomorrow I've got to go fly to Chicago. So I'll be on the airplane writing my book. And I can write on trains and I can write in hotel rooms. As long as I have my story in my headphones, I can write anywhere. But I like to write here. I, all my stuff. If you liked Alrighty. this book, what other books have you wrote that we would probably like? What other books would you pr probably like? Mm -hmm. That are similar. Every single book I've ever written. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've written a bunch of different books. I've written for guys your age. I wrote my first books were ghost stories. So if you like ghost <laughs> stories, I have a haunted mystery series with the crossroads, the hanging hill, the smoky corridor, the black heart crypt, all about a a boy named Zach Jennings who could see ghosts. And then I did another series that the publisher didn't push very much. So not many people have ever seen it, but it's called Riley Mack and the Other Known Troublemakers. And it's one of my favorite books. Kids who read it love it because it's an Ocean's Eleven starring an 11-year-old. It's like Mission Impossible, a group of kids who get together and they put the, they, they, they do good. They go out in the world, they do good. And then I've written a bunch of books with James Patterson. Uh, if you like aliens, we've got a thing called Daniel X Armageddon. And then we did I Funny. Have any of you guys read I Funny yet? Yeah. It's a big bestseller. I know they have that at Scholastic Book Fair a lot. So there's I Funny, I Even Funnier, and then in January, I Totally Funnies will come out. And then Treasure Hunters is fun that I do with James Patterson. It's action adventure, and the second book in that series just came out. So just go to the G section of your library and stay there all day. <laughs> Um, we're so thankful that you are able to do this Skype with us. I want to move the camera just so that you can see uh, the whole audience because um, our whole fifth grade read your book and they are so excited and they so loved it. And so I want you to see all of your awesome, all your, all your fans, wonderful fans, wonderful teachers with our So have fun reading.